Hello, hello. It is Natasha here from the London Embroidery School joining you today after a bit of a break. So um, hopefully you're doing well. I say it's been a bit of a break. It has been a while since I've done one of these. So I hope that you're all well and uh, that life is treating you a little bit better than it has been going previous to this. It's um, It's been a bit of a a changeable ride for all of us, I think. But we've been super busy of recent, thanks to all of you guys. So it's lovely to see so many of you joining me straight off the bat. I'm going to be working on um, a piece of, well, a little section of our Coral online class, which so many of you seem to enjoy so much when we launched it. Um, so it's really great for me to be able to say that it is back in stock. It's sold out several times over since we launched it, which is just wonderful. Um, and it seems like an awful lot of you guys have been really enjoying it. So yeah, if you haven't got involved with it already, then please do grab one of those whilst we still have stock. So this is just a little section of that today. And I say a little section because the class itself um, includes 21 3D beading techniques. So it's it's quite a lot to get your teeth stuck into. And so I've just got a little bit of it here to be playing around with. Now you'll notice that the colours are not quite the same as our kits. I've just put together a little, little taster for you today from something that was left over. This is in fact the fabric that I developed the class on, um, but not the one that we We've got a much nicer printed pattern for you guys. I'm just roughing it here. Um, but the techniques are all the same. And I think that that's what's the most exciting thing about um, this class is that there are so many techniques included and so many different combinations that once you've learned them, they're yours to do with whatever you want. And, you know, I think once you arm yourself with these sort of skills, you can really go to town on making things really interesting. And I'd, that's what really excites us is finding out, you know, how you're going to use the new skills that you learn. That's the real beauty of it. You know, and it's whether we're going to be seeing this sort of uh, sequin wave technique that we have down here, whether that's going to be popping up on, I don't know, a denim jacket or something, or whether you're going to have um, a ribbon coral covered cushion at home, or yeah, it's just taking it where you want to go with it. And obviously you don't have to be limited just to the materials that we use. We obviously in the kit give you everything you're going to need to make your own coral bed and make it look just as beautiful um, as any example you will see. But, you know, it's um, you don't have to be limited to just using the materials that we show you how to use. You can apply, that's the beauty of techniques, isn't it? You can apply it to whatever you want and really start to make it your own. At the moment, I'm just working on a covered bead, which um, as you can see, and from the sounds of it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is a bead covered bead. Um, so I'm just building up the layers over the top to give that a bit more of a textured finish. And again, with that, you'll notice that, in fact, it's it's not the same bead as from the kit that I'm using, but it's got a little bit more of a, like, dapperly, um, painterly texture on this one. And, you know, you can just mix it up and use whatever you want once you know what you're doing with them. And there are lots of skills to be learnt with this class, aside from the fact that it's just a really beautiful thing at the end. I've got a finished one over here, and, I mean, there's just so much going on. I mean, these guys are crazy, but I love them. Um, I think these ones are fabulous. These are from um, a like a beaded jewellery technique. Um, it's the kind of how you build bracelets, basically. But, you know, you can apply them in this way. It doesn't just have to be for a jewellery outcome. We've got lots of lovely tassels around the edge. This is that ribbon coral that I talked about. 
but there's lots of texture, lots of height and lots of interest. It's, you know, all of the different angles that you see it from really shows you just different parts of the techniques and the various angles that you can catch the light at. And it's just such a beautiful piece in the end. You've got these big reflective ones up the top here as well. I'm sure you can see from that that, you know, it is a real show-stopping piece to have at the end as well as arming you with a new set of skills. They've got a fair few fun names, I always think. So we've got some, we've got a technique called fish eggs, um, which I am going to be doing a little bit later on in this section that I'm working on today. Um, obviously, we've got the covered bead that I talked about. We've got sequin waves. That's what this is down here. And that's a really fabulous technique. I have to say that that one has really sparked my imagination. Um, unsurprisingly, I do do a fair bit of stitching in my own time as well. And um, that's the technique that I decided to kind of take a bit further on and see what you could do with it when it's done on a, a bigger scale. So if you want to see how that went, um, because I actually have full pieces that are all done in this technique, then um, you can have a little look at that. I have a YouTube channel called Taking Time with Tasha. You'll also find me on Instagram. Um, if you want to see kind of some of these techniques taken that bit further and um, yeah, just pushing it that bit further, which is what we'd love to see you do too. So if you need some inspiration, I'm, I'm all here for that. And yeah, there is a little further reading for you guys. So I've got some comments, Cosmosma. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. So you said, uh, I loved this class and it was great fun to do and I enjoyed the tutorials. Fabulous. The only problem is finding sequins and beads to play around with with my own designs. I haven't found a large bead for covered beads. Yes. Um, yeah. Sourcing is always a bit of a tricky one. Um, I think it's one of those things where if you see something you like, just grab it. And I mean that in the sense of, you know, sometimes you can find really interesting things in uh, like thrift shops and um, in like old garments that you might not have thought about or old bags are particularly good for really interesting beads if you want to sort of mix things up a little bit. Um, this large bead that I'm working on here is actually a... Um, from years and years ago and I think it was a necklace that we took apart so like costume jewelry is also really good for finding interesting large beads however the ones that we've got in the kit the large beads um yeah from the coral kit they come from creative bead craft um so if you are stuck and you're, you're looking for those large beads to keep building off of then you can definitely get them there we've obviously just included one color in our kit but you can there, I think there were like maybe 15 on um, Creative Bee Craft when I had a look at them. So maybe you'll find something more to your liking over there. Something to try if you are a bit stuck. If any of you have any burning embroidery questions you'd like to pose to me today, do feel free to pop them in the comments. I am trying to keep an eye on the comments whilst I am stitching. And so, yeah, whilst you've got me and we're live, then do feel free to ask. Um, if you think it's probably a bit strange, I do read them out. It's just so that um, when we pop this onto our YouTube channel, uh, which will happen in the next few weeks, I can't say exactly when, um, then um, the comments all disappear from the recording. So um, I read them out so that everything still makes sense in the future. So I'm just gonna start myself a new thread as I've got to the end of this one here. Just popped a nice big bead in the middle. Finish that off. And I'll thread myself up a new piece. We've been keeping ourselves very busy of recent um, with our Pages Mushroom class. I don't know whether any of you guys have seen it, but I've got my little one here just keeping me company today. It's, um, it's just so cute. Um, I can't get over how cute it is. And it's a really nice little, 
like uh, yeah sewing companion so often particularly at the moment you know when people are stitching they are um usually on or possibly on their own so it's um nice to have something fun to look at and i do think that the pages mushroom is definitely a fun little pin cushion i don't know whether you can see that there sorry i'm just gonna move this for a second isn't it gorgeous it's velvet topped i just think it's so much fun every time i see it it makes me smile um and yeah i definitely haven't talked to it at all while stitching on my own that that would be unreasonable um anyway yeah that's been keeping us busy of recent as we launched that uh was it two last week last friday yes so it is brand new hot off the press um so if you fancy trying that out as well there is also really good stock of that at the moment on our website pages is a really unusual and interesting technique it's one you probably haven't heard of but i expect you will have seen um, and that's the thing, it's a, it's a couture technique where you sort of build up layer upon layer of fabric, fabric of your choice, usually a lightweight fabric. And um, that is one what you'll see, it's supposed to look like the pages of a book, basically, which is where the name comes from. Um, so we have applied that to a pincushion pattern to teach in the class so that you kind of have a bit more of a practical use for the pages technique it can be a bit more of a tricky one to kind of work out how you would use it um if you're not kind of if you're not interested in building garments basically that i appreciate that's not everybody's bag um but you might still want to know about beautiful things and so yeah we we talk a lot in that class about using the couture technique and how you might go about, you know, reinterpreting that for your own works, how it gets used in couture garments and the different sort of approaches you could take within the technique. But, um, yeah, I think the real beauty of it is that you come out with a nice, practical, cute item to use, as well as that knowledge of a couture skill. Okay, I can see I've missed some comments. I'm just going to scroll up quickly. So Diana Smith 646. I recently found a good supply of rayon threads at a creative uh, reuse store. Do you have any for embroidering with rayon thread? I would say rayon thread is a bit of an interesting one, particularly for hand embroidery because it's... Um, it, it's quite fraying. Um, it likes to split apart because it's got that really high gloss nature to it. So you might find if you're trying to hand embroider with it, then I'd say maybe have a little look at trying it with some wax or some thread magic. Um, now, thread magic actually isn't something that we stock on our website, um, but it is quite a handy thing to have in your box of you know, just sewing supplies. It's a good one if you're working with something that you know is going to be a bit tricky and has a bit more of a fraying quality. And that might just help to keep it together a little bit for you. Do use it sparingly. I'm not saying don't go mad with it uh, because you don't want it to be coating your thread so fully that it starts to give it um, like a white opaque sort of sheen and that would affect the shine of the thread. But it might just, particularly on the ends, help to keep that together for you to make it a little bit easier to work with. And also just to um, try not to use too long threads when you're stitching with it. It can be a real temptation to take really long threads and think, oh, this will last me a good while. But actually so often longer threads get caught up so easily and create knots and then you end up wasting loads of time trying to undo the knots that you've got in the twist because the thread was long enough that it could flap about wildly and um you know the tension get caught up somewhere else and it just it ends up causing you more problems and in fact making you a bit slower than you would have otherwise been so yeah don't go too long with your thread 
and actually you'll you'll find overall you are that bit faster even if you do have to you know start a new thread and finish a new thread more regularly you'll have much greater control right i'm nearly done with this one here so i think i'm going to move on and do a different technique just to mix it up a little bit i think oh need a couple more We've got such a mix of um, materials in this kit. It really is good fun. And I have to say, the finished piece weighs an absolute ton. Um, yeah, it's a really heavy piece when you're done. And I'm sure when you receive your kit, you'll realise um, just how weighty all of those beads and sequins are. Um, but it's that combination of different textures and finishes that I think makes for a really fun piece overall there's just yeah so much to look at so many different layers right let's try some of these fish eggs because i think they're a really fun looking technique too very simple it's just about making interesting choices with your materials really and that's all there really is to the fish eggs you're just stacking two little seed beads of different sizes on top of one another but when you build these up, and with embroidery, so much of it is a patience game. You know, it's just all about building up those textures, allowing them to sort of work against one another, noticing the differences, perhaps in your colour changes, and, you know, really thinking about how you can approach the design to make it interesting overall. It might be very subtle though, things don't have to be super obvious and super high coloured like this particular piece is, although it's rather lovely for it. But sometimes you might want to do something a little bit more sophisticated and having loads of textures in your arsenal is a really great way to do that because you can communicate so much through those textures. And I always think if you're interested in textiles, those who are really interested in texture tend to be more drawn to embroidery. You know, it tends to be those who are um, you know, more interested in pattern that then you know, tend to gravitate that bit more towards print outcomes, for example. And those that are interested in structure tend to head towards more knitted outcomes. But it's those who, yeah, love the textures, tend to be drawn to embroidery. So you can see they build quite quickly, which is quite satisfying too. So there's a lot of um, satisfying parts to building beading in this way. Obviously, it's not the only way to, to build beading. We also have um, timbre, which I also adore as a technique. I think it's also super satisfying because you've got that continuous chain really making progress quickly and if you want to cover big areas fast with relatively small beads then timbre really is the way to go so if you're into beading if you're if you're feeling this but um you know you're thinking more on a bigger scale than like finer details like we're showing here then maybe timbre might be a slightly better outcome for you sorry i think i've got a helicopter going over me i hope that's not coming across on the audio too horrendously. I'm sure it'll be gone in a second. But um, yeah, the, the fish eggs are good fun for, I, th I really love this color combination too. I mean, it's picking those complementary colors to go together, but having a really bright, strong sunshine yellow, and then quite a soft sort of almost pushed back um, lilac is I think really satisfying definitely brings in those details now whilst I was talking about the timbre I do have a little exclusive tidbit for you guys in that we are in the process of working on an intermediate timbre course so our beginners well our, our timbre online classes 
are up and also in stock at the moment, I believe, for um, for the ones with the kits, if you want to go for that equally. It's a great class for if you are one of our international watchers, customers, commu- part of the community, and you are international, and you perhaps don't want to either wait for your parcel to come in the post, or you're not confident in your postal service of the country that you are in, um, which is unfortunately the case for some people, then fear not. We do also sell our classes as um, just class alone. And so if you're happy to kind of source your own materials, which you might well do for Tamba, um, provided you can get a hook um, to work with, then you're pretty much good to go. And you can interpret the same class as we will be um, teaching but with whatever materials you have to hand. And with the class, you get the template that um, we will be working on in the kits. So you can kind of make it up as your own. If you don't want to be hanging on for a kit to come in the post, or as I say, if you're not sure about getting a kit, just go for the class on its own. There is plenty that you could do with that and still make it really interesting and worthwhile because so much of the way that we teach is about focusing on those techniques as I mentioned earlier Um, it does mean that you know you can adapt it as you need for your own outcomes and that can be right from the off yeah the kits are there for those who you know want to follow on exactly as is and want to stitch with us stitch for stitch like you would do if we were able to have our in-class classes but um for those who aren't so worried about that and are just worried about you know getting yourself some new skills then go for the class only options there is um you know they're they're still a really good resource and with all of these you don't have any restrictions on your access all of the classes are hosted um on our online platform and so once you've got the link to that that is yours to keep and you can keep you know going away pause and play whenever you wish if you you know if you only have time to stitch when you know the kids are in bed um and it's just you know half an hour you have for an evening that's not a problem just you know go for half an hour of the class and pick it up again another night there's no sort of set timing to it or issues with that you know if you find someone comes to the door you can just pause it you're in full control and you can learn the best way that you learn doing big stints of stitching isn't for everyone I appreciate that that is um you know something you might want to work up towards and you know for for me that is that well that's a good day um (laughs) honestly, but I appreciate that not everyone feels like that. And as much as you might enjoy stitching, you might not have or, you know, be able to, to sit and stitch for, I don't know, four hours at a go. And so with those classes, because you can just stop and start as you wish, you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to please anyone else. It's just about you and your learning. And that is what is important and that we should be focusing on. Okay. Um, again, I've got another couple of comments. Thank you. So uh, I liked the colours, the lilac with coral and the transparent sequins. Yeah, we've really tried to play around with a whole host of different um both textures and colours so you know you have got quite a few opaque um, beads but you've also got some more reflective ones we've got some matte ones we've got some really sort of high shine almost um, metallic type ones over here you know we've also got some um, embroidery floss that we use in that which then obviously has a very matte effect to it and then you've got the sheerer pieces Um, in the form of the ribbon and those, yeah, almost transparent sequins, just adding that hint of colour and hopefully providing um, enough different textures to keep your interest. And I think it's, 
you know, having a beautiful piece at the end to admire, I think is um, really worthwhile with this particular piece. We were really, really pleased about how it's come out. And I have to say, I've obviously been looking at mine. I think it was, it's probably about six, seven months ago, I started developing it. Um, and so I've been looking at it a lot, you know, for, I'd say, a good six months, solidly. And I'm, I'm not bored of it, you know. I know I'm a little bit of a um, a biased one here because, you know, I love embroidery. Um, <laughs> and I fully appreciate that I, you know, full disclosure, I am a very biased person on this front because I love embroidery. But I do still look at mine and there's, you know, something else to see that I've forgotten was in there, which I think um, still makes it, you know, a really interesting thing to have in your home to appreciate long after you've ingested those skills. So we've got um, Paula Net dot DK. Hello from Denmark. Oh, okay. And it's lovely to have you here. And we've got Blanky Rico. Hello from Uruguay. Oh, I love this. And uh, Cario Cori E A Art. Hi from Colombia. Hello to Colombia as well. I find it fascinating seeing where you guys are from. It's um. It's really lovely to have you join me. And when I have a gap between our stitch alongs, I always sort of, um, I, I miss this element of being able to just like chat to you guys and see what you're thinking, hear your feedback, see what you're interested by. And um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a lovely way to get right in touch with you guys. So yeah, anything you want to ask me, please do feel free. I'm here and will try and be as best I can answer any questions you might have. Embroidery or London Embroidery School related, you let me know. Equally, if you want to tell me anything that you would particularly like to learn that we are currently not fulfilling, um, then I will do my best to try and rectify that. I love to hear your feedback. I like to know what you guys are interested in because, you know, it's um, it's all for you guys. Oh, we've got a good day from <laughs> good day from Australia. Um, hello to you too, and another one from Latvia. You guys are from all over today. Cosmo Mosa has um, your plan is to make a box lid with yours uh, with your coral class kit and that is a really good idea yeah because the thing is that you want you want it to be something that um yeah nothing's going to go on top of and nothing's going to squash all those textures but it is nice if you can find a way to make it practical make it useful because then it's both beautiful and useful and i mean that's the full package you know that's the dream isn't it So I think that's a fantastic idea. If you um, if you do get around to that and you fancy sharing a picture with us, I'd love to see that. I really would. So please do feel free to DM us or tag us in your own pictures. Um, we love to share what you guys have achieved as well. Um, of course, we always have our student of the month. Uh, today, oh yes, today is the last day of the month. So today is your last chance if you would like to be June's student of the month, you will win, if you are the winner, a 10% off voucher for the London Embroidery School website that is applied or can be applied to anything you purchase on the London Embroidery School website. So, you know, if you're planning on, perhaps you've already taken one of our classes, but if you're planning on taking one of our big classes, so something like, I don't know, either the Tamba class I mentioned earlier, that's a three part class. So um, if you go for that with a kit, it is it's £100 for if you went for the deluxe kit and the three classes all together. And so, you know, you could save yourself a penny or two on that if you were um, 
June Student of the Month winner. If you'd like to be that winner, then do tag us in your London Embroidery School makes um, using at London M School, our handle, so that we get to see that. Tag us in your picture and um, we get to see all of those and we'll be having a little look at how you are getting on with it and we'll pick someone who we, uh, yeah, we think did the best of who those who submitted for the month. You can resubmit next month as well if you don't win. Um, there's no reason not to. There's nothing stopping you. And we also tend to do a, a little blog on you and the piece that you made, uh, what you took and um, yeah, other things that we might sort of have seen from your Instagram. So do make sure you're happy for us to share your photos before you tag us in your photo because uh, we are very nosy and we love to see what you've been up to and we love to see what you're making. And it's a really great way for us to be able to see all of that but also for us to use a little bit of our platform to share some of your lovely and really interesting works. You know, you guys always have such interesting ideas of your own and it's just fascinating for us to see where you're taking it. Nim Fadiana, uh, I think that's the lady from Latvia. Uh, now I'm making wedding accessories with your ribbon roses. Very nice. I bet they are beautiful. And it's always nice to see people using things for weddings. But equally, uh, we've, some of our previous students of the month have been uh, costume makers or they've been um, yeah, interested in cosplay. Some are fashion or textile students who are, you know, really working to develop their own work, trying to build up as many skills as they possibly can. And so often, you know, I think if you are taking something like um, a mixed media degree or if you're taking a fashion degree, um, something that's not necessarily textile specific, often with embroidery, because it is, you know, it's quite a time consuming process. No one's going to, to say here, I think we all have a, uh, an understanding that embroidery is time consuming, but that's part of its beauty. But because of that, if you're on a course that doesn't specifically teach embroidery, often it doesn't get included because it is such a slow process in so many ways. So they don't really have time to focus on teaching you something that, you know, isn't necessarily absolutely part of the curriculum. And so, you know, those are the sort of students that we get who want to expand their skills that bit further if it's something that they're not um, necessarily learning about, but they have the interest in, in their own studies. And then it does allow you to bring a little something extra that no one else on your course is going to have had, you know, particularly when you've armed yourself with those skills and then you apply your own approach to it. And often some of the, you know, most interesting works do come out of people who are in a slightly different field um, than necessarily like straight, straight embroidery because they've got a slightly different way of thinking about it, that little bit of a different approach um, allows them to just think that bit further outside the box and perhaps will be the way to push a technique in a direction that somebody else wouldn't have thought about, you know? I tend to find that, for example, the fashion students take to the fabric manipulation techniques very well. Not entirely surprising, given that they are, um, you know, well-versed with fabric qualities, but they just, you know, it really clicks that, you know, changing how a fabric works and using it as an embellishment rather than for a garment outcome. And then you can kind of bring it all together. Um, we've got Andrea. Um, yes, lovely palette of colours. Thank you very much. And we've got Suzanne O'Burnson, who says hello from Denmark. That's really, it's so cool to find out where you guys are from. I love it. Right, I need to finish off this thread. Because it's getting a bit short. And I always think when your thread starts to get short, it really starts to affect your tension. So don't let it get too, too short. 
and we'll get ourselves a fresh one. Okay, let's give something slightly different a try. Now I'm going a little bit off piece here um, and stepping slightly away from the draft. But that's okay. I feel like you guys will forgive me. Will you forgive me? Uh, we've got DM Embroidery Designs who says, beautiful. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thanks for joining us today. So I'm just going to think maybe down in here. Let's... Um, Let's get a few more bits out. So I think I'm going to bring over some slightly different beads. So I've got some bugles here. They are a twisted bugle, which is always fun. And I'm going to grab myself some sequins. Get this thread anchored. Always important to make sure that your thread is fully anchored before you start. Even if you're popping a knot in the end, it's um, always good to make sure that it is really secure before you begin. The last thing you need is a small oversight on starting your thread to upset your whole um your whole bead run and the more will come off or just not last as long as they should. Ah, oh, see, I think I've picked up the wrong sequence. I think these ones are probably a little bit too big. Here we go. These are the ones that somebody mentioned earlier about the coral ones. And I, I did absolutely fall in love with this color. It's, um, it's quite a sort of, lobstery flamingo-y pink. I just think it's fabulous. So as you can see here, this, this combination of beads and sequins, you know, it's not groundbreaking. Um, uh, by no means are we, you know, remaking the wheel here, but getting that bit creative with your combinations can, you know, really build you something interesting and you, like from the side you get a little bit of that that green bugle bead but you're just getting that height from the bugle bead which is the most interesting part for me I always think and you can build up a little it's almost like a canopy of raised sequins using the seed beads as a little stopper on the top Catching my thread there, get that control back. So as you can see with this one, it doesn't really matter what color the bugle bead underneath is because you're gonna be covering it over. But it's more about getting that height. However, in saying that, we can also reverse the order. So one of the other ways you can go about it is to go for a sequin first, then go for the bugle bead. And it is important that the seed bead is on the top because that's kind of how we turn. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to jog you guys there. Um, yeah, so the seed bead acts as the stopper, but we can put the sequin down at the bottom and then we do start to get to appreciate that bugle bead and the lovely sort of twisty greenness that it brings. Now I tend to think that these ones look like little tiny flowers when you build them up, but these ones look more like little stalks. Um, so, you know, that's um, definitely something you could play around with. Yeah, they remind me of, um, did you ever play with Lego when you were young? Perhaps, and you know, the little like Lego basket flowers that they included that were obviously, you know, super modular because it's Lego. That's what they remind me of. So just 
really making sure I have control of that thread because we've got a lot of elements that we are passing that thread through. So we want to make sure we've got full control of all of the elements to make sure we get the best outcome. Maybe we'll throw back another purple one in here. Bring in a little variety. It's a slightly larger sequin. It does make a difference. Making sure we're giving it that space. Because you don't want these to be too close together. These ones need a bit of room to breathe. Perhaps we'll pop another sequin on the base here again. Give ourselves some room on the surface. Uh, DM Embroidery Designs, always love watching and seeing your work. Thank you so much. It really does mean an awful lot to me to you know hear you guys' feedback and your comments. Um, it, it absolutely makes doing these uh, worthwhile for me personally, but it's also really useful for us to yeah see what you guys are liking and what you're disliking that's also important you know you can't have one without the other oh that one's not sitting very well what's going on there let's just take it back there we go so if you are having problems with your tension, you might just find that, you know, giving it a little pull, taking it back a step and then going forwards again gives you back the control that you may have lost or will just even out that little weirdness that you had in your tension. Uh, we have Epic Zero One. Wow, this is so beautiful. Gorgeous work. A pleasure to watch you. Thank you for making this video. You are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for sharing your comments. That was very kind. Now, I'm sure if you have made it this long into this stitch along, then you're probably one of our regulars. And I expect that you are already signed up to our mailing list. But that is the place to be signed up to if you want to be the first to know when we are releasing a new class if you want first dibs on those kits as they come out um, then our vip list our newsletter they always get to know first so if you haven't signed up to it head over there once we're done here and um, get yourself on the list we probably email a day once a week to let you know what we've been up to. It's usually on a Friday, because that's when we do our launch days. And yeah, you will be the first to know. Um, so yeah, if you want dibs, that's the place to be. You'll find the sign up at the bottom of our London Embroidery School homepage. Uh, we have ACLCT, really nice. Hello from Paris, hi to you too. And we also have the nail gal who says so pretty. Thank you very much. That is what we were definitely going for with this one. As you can probably tell, we threw quite a lot at it, but I, I think it's worked out in the end. This is one of those occasions where I feel like more is more. We have some more paired back classes, you know, a little bit more sophisticated. Um, but, I, you know, this one, it's got it all going for it. Now, I am very much coming up towards the end of my time with you guys today. So I just want to show you something very quickly. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can catch more from me on my own channel, which is Taking Time with Tasha, um, where I took 
this technique here and kind of push that a bit further. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second and produced this piece with that. So you can see how you can really build up the texture and make it into something else entirely. And so, yeah, I think, I think it's a really fun technique and there's so much you could do with the other techniques from this class. You know, there's so many things going on here. Um, so you can do something like this of your own, you know, you could build up with the, the fish eggs and see what you think about that. But this was my interpretation of just one of these techniques, um, which I have to say I have fallen in love with. And this became the first piece of, um, I, I want to say four now, three or four that I've done in this style, um, in my own stitching, in my own sort of artistic development. Um, Oh, thank you very much, guys. I can see you're all, so, you're all being so lovely. Um, it's called Taking Time with Tasha. Um, I will pop that in, in the details somewhere for you to find. Um, yeah, Taking Time with Tasha. Right, I think that is probably all I have time for today. It's been a real pleasure to chat with you guys. If I missed any of your comments then please do uh, direct message us. I will be looking at those after um, I've come off being live. It wasn't that I, if I missed your comment, it's simply because I'm stitching whilst trying to read, um, not that I was trying to avoid them. So if I missed anything, direct message me, I will get back to you. All right, I will leave it there with you guys today. Have fun, stay safe and uh, keep making beautiful things and then let us see them because I found it, the, the waiting kills me. you got to show me the pretty things, guys. All right, I'll leave it there for today. Bye for now.